So uh, today I want to talk about time in different uh, different time frames. Um, what I found in my own experience, and uh, certainly from studying NLP and and talking to different people, is people perceive time in many many different ways. And the the aspect that I want to sort of zoom in on uh, right now is the idea of what time orientation do you have and what sort of time frame are you considering at any given moment? Now, let's break this down a couple of different ways. Um, from where we are now in the present, uh, some people definitely are focused on the past um, and nobody's like stuck in one time orientation. We, we all move around and we all have our kind of defaults that we go to quite often. So some people are are constantly um, might be popping back into the past. So actually kind of reassociating into a past experience, or they might be doing sort of rapid comparison with, with past experience. So let, let's say I'm, I'm playing um, a pinball game. I, as I'm playing, I might be referencing past times when I was playing that video, I mean, that, uh, that pinball game. Now, another thing you can do, which opens up, you know, massive possibilities is instead of referencing the past, you can also reference a future imagined state or a future goal. So you can be comparing yourself to how are you doing, and you can also be imagining new possibilities that you're, that you're building towards. So that's future and past orientation. And then there's also a sense of you know, in the same way that some people are actually reassociating into the past, some people are associating into the future. And that can be quite useful sometimes because um, certainly it can help you snap out of any, uh, any challenge you're experiencing in the moment. You can, you can sort of go, okay, this, this will pass and I'm going to be in this future state that's, that's exciting. Now, notice I'm gesturing here for the future, I'm gesturing here for the past. That's how my time orientation is set up. I, just for the people who are watching who are other NLP people, certainly we know that some people put the future in front of them, either the right or left and the past behind them. So there are many different ways we can orient our timeline. And what I'm talking about is slightly different than that. So there, there is whether we're focusing on past or future, and then there's kind of the time frame um, that you that you live in or that you're um, sort of experiencing in your thinking. So some people are living in today. You know, they're 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 thinking like, okay, it's it's today, and I have a general sense of how long today is and what part of the day I'm in. Um, you know, right now, for me, it's four thirty. So, you know, I'm a little past midday and I'm heading into the evening. Um, some people are holding a time orientation of maybe the week. So in, in my case, I'm recording this on a Thursday. So again, I'm, I'm past midway on the week and I'm, I'm approaching heading into the, the weekend. Now, those are two radically different Time frames, whether you're focused on sort of a day time frame or a day bucket versus a week, it's a lot like in your in your calendar on your phone or your computer. You can zoom in and say, "Okay, I'm only focused on the day, and the hours are moving incrementally," or I'm focusing on the week. Or some people zoom out and they're they're focusing on the month, right? And here we're in the beginning of May. I'm recording this on May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. So we're at the beginning of a new month, basically. And I might have a, a month, a sense of what a month is and where I am in the month. I know some people who are thinking kind of in three month chunks. And so they'll have a sense of, you know, I would say a three month or a four month uh, chunk. They might be thinking in terms of quarters um, or, or even, you know, okay, what, what part of the year am I in? So, I'm still in pretty much in the first quarter. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm in May. <laughs> I don't think this way very often. So, um, so 
I'm in May, so I'm almost done with the second quarter or, or kind of in the middle of the second quarter, but almost halfway through the year. You know, I, I know many people who are kind of living in today's orientation or even a week, um, they may not sort of come up for air and contemplate sort of the year or half year, quarter year time frame except on major holidays. And very often not until the holiday season at the end of the year where they, at New Year's, they go, whoa, a, a year passed. What did I do last year? Um, whereas some people are constantly kind of surveying that whole landscape of a year. And that gives you, you know, just a very different experience of things. Um, one time I was kind of having a conversation with an NLP colleague of mine and what she does is she has her timeline kind of wrapped around her. And she, for some reason, I think she tracks roughly nine months, maybe because that's what the, the school year was when she was growing up. But as she's moving along, she's always watching how she's doing in terms of a goal and a, a sort of a fixed uh, deadline in the year. And so she doesn't let that deadline keep moving. So as she's getting closer and closer, she wants to get more done. She doesn't want to get to that point, let's say it was in September and realize that she didn't get anything done. So she's always tracking that same sort of nine, nine month segment until she gets to the next one. And then I think it resets. Um, so she has sort of a nine month awareness that she's, she's uh, used to. Now you could you could certainly have a year, and then some people will say, you know, what's your three year plan, or what's your five year plan, and um, it's also interesting to go back. Uh, I, I have a friend, and she read about an exercise where you go and you start at birth, and you document some of the things that you achieved in say five year increments. Now, for some of you, there may not be too many of those. <laughs> I have quite a few of those and, and it's interesting. Okay, so what did you do from zero to five? Okay, well, you learned how to speak. Um, you learned how to walk. You learned how to tie your shoes and get dressed and things like that. And then five to 10, it's like, again, different accomplishments. And it's, it's interesting to look at those five year increments. So these are some of the different uh, time frames. Now, some people are only in the present, so there's not even awareness of sort of time passing. It's all one big moment. Um, what I recommend is uh, practicing switching between these. And th this can be really useful if you find yourself stuck at any moment. Um, to just notice, okay, what's my time frame here? What's my what's my orientation? Is it future? Is it present? Is it past? And what's the size of the um, frame that I'm surveying? You know, if you're if you're really stuck in today and today is a, a tough day, you may want to pull back to a week, to a month, to a quarter, to a half a year, to a year, and it can it can help you snap out or you know, hop into the future and take a look at now from the future or hop into the past and sort of marvel at where you've gotten um, all the things you've accomplished. Um, so yeah, I would practice, especially, you know, this is, this is just how I like to practice things. The one that I, the ones that I notice that I don't do very often, those are the ones that I practice usually, you know, and I, I practice going back and forth and back and forth. So it starts to become part of my um, normal repertoire of what my, what my nervous system can do very easily without thinking. So I hope you have some fun with that. And uh, yeah, hope you expand your sense of time.